Everybody likes dancing, right? <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing Live number 129. We're going to talk about pulling chest voice. Is it bad? When is it bad? How are you? So this is a this is something that I'm very experienced at. I did it f constantly for about um, hmm, yeah, probably 50 years of my life, and uh, sometimes on purpose. Sometimes because I didn't know any better most of that time, those first 43 years. And uh, the, the next several years, just trying to figure out how to, um, how to manage it. Okay, so anyway, um, it's a topic that continues to resurface all the time because that's what we, that's what we learn how, that's how we get all our, our high notes, right? That's how we start learning how to be able to negotiate these very challenging uh, notes that we have to sing, that we want to sing. All right, so I want to say hi to Joe Weston. Hi, nice to have you here, Joe. And also, um, let me see here. It's a new person that I don't recognize. Let me just pull this down a little bit. Landa Hatomska. Hello, love you. Well, thank you. I love you too. Um, okay, so um, Russell Sapphire, nice to have you with us today. Darko, great to have you here. Horizon, hello. So welcome you guys. Uh, nice to have you involved today in our show. So do you think that you pull chest voice? Yes or no? Let me know. Yes or no? Do you think you pull chest voice? Give me, let me know in the description, uh, just in the comments below, just yes or no, I pull chest, or I think I do pull chest, or I think I'm pulling chest. Let me know in the description below. I, when I was a younger singer in high school, I was in madrigal group. We went to Europe. We had a fantastic experience, life-changing experience, lifelong friends that I cherish, um, as well as our director, and um, one of the songs that we sang during the couple years that, let me see, was it in my, hmm, yeah, I think it was the Madrigal Group. Um, I sang something called Turtle Dove. I, fa I sang the solo. And um, I think it's by Ralph Vaughn Williams. And it ends on a, it's... I don't know, it's the top note is a D, I believe, above middle C. And um, it was, I, you know, I can't remember. Somewhere around, somewhere around B flat or uh, B flat minor or uh, B minor or A minor, there's this song and it sounds like, Fare ye well, my dear, I must be gone, and something for a while. Anyway, I got to do the solo, and we ended up making an album as this group of uh, magical singers, and I didn't make the cut. <laughs> well, I remember singing that song, and there was this, like, I thought it was like this extremely high note. It was like maybe the E flat. And it was like, I, you know, it's like the end of the world for me. And I know, ladies and gentlemen, that I was pulling the chest voice. Now, even though that's not what most uh, guys' bridges start, which is the E, uh, my bridge really begins at the A below middle C. And I had no concept of what that was. But I've been there and I've done it. And I've done it a lot of years. Um, and in fact, that's kind of what I have to always watch out for, is that the larynx is coming up, I start pulling chest. We'll get into that. So, um, okay, Landa, no, okay, of course no. Well, good for you guys. 
Darko says, I feel resonating near the forehead when I try to sing some high notes. Is that pulling chest or am I in mix? This is so confusing to me. Good. This, this today is going to help you because today we're going to talk about what is it? We're going to talk about um, what, is this, what does it sound like? And is that okay? And number three is uh, how to make it better. Okay? So uh, Joe says, I try not to pull chest, but you know sometimes it sneaks up on me. I have to stay on top of it. And that's kind of where I'm at too, Joe. Um, if I have a default that I unconsciously go to, it's getting better now. It's, it's getting so that I recognize it right away. But um, that's my kind of my tends to. I tend to be pull chest high larynx, vocal type. Do you know your vocal type? I'll mention it again, but if you don't know your vocal type, take uh, get the PDF in the description below. It says get your vocal type. It's a PDF. It'll take you, it's a link to a vocal test. You can take the test, get your vocal type, and then it takes you to exercises for your vocal type, which is just, they're, they are made to help you become a better singer. Let me just uh, cut this uh, song out. It's playing in the background. So we're going to close it. All right. Now, um, all right, so what, what is pulled chest? I remember when I first even heard the term, it was like kind of a mystery to me. And so... I thought it was kind of like yelling, yelling uh, the low voice higher, you know. Um, I guess the, the best example is just to give you a couple examples of what it feels like or what it sounds like. So um, Darko says he feels like it's, he feels resonating near the forehead when I try to sing some high notes. Is that pulling chest or am I in mix? Darko, you, I, from your description, you know, if I pull the chest voice really hard, my whole head vibrates, <laughs> you know. Um, <clears throat> it's so hard to, dis it's hard to describe pulled chest and have it apply to every person, okay. So let me give you some notes by which you might be able to tell whether you're pulling chest. For the guys, anywhere... Um, for the true bass, uh, 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 that's the low D. And it's not even Saturday morning. What do you know? Um, those basso voices, A, B flat, B, I always felt something at the B, C, middle C, D flat, D, E flat, any place especially as you're getting close to the second bridge, which for the bassos, for the baritones, the tenors, and many basses, E above middle C is, is where the bridge, the transition, the bridge, the passaggio starts. If you're there and still in chest, it's going to feel heavy. It's going to feel thick. It's going to feel like you're pushing up. <laughs> you're pushing this... You're pushing your voice higher and higher. It feels labored. Sometimes your mouth, you know, your, the, the, the veins in your neck start sticking out <laughs> because, you know, you're just trying to get the note. Now that's where I used to stop. <laughs> Don't go any further, Chuck. Because if you do, I have the brakes right there on the F, and then it's all like Mickey Mouse. Um, or, oh, oh, just flat under the pitch. Um, I don't pull chest as well as I used to. I I wish I had my I wish I had a recording or something. We have videos back then when I was starting out. I wish I had a video of, of me pulling the chest voice. I do have a, actually there is a video where I sang in a, a workshop with Seth Riggs and I sang Maria from West Side Story and I, 
Here's another example of, of pulling chest where you're saying, Not too bad, but the vowel was spreading. And so in the workshop, uh, Mr. Riggs said, Maria. And so I said, Maria. I said, no, 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 Maria. And I finally got it, Maria. So you, you can hear the difference between Maria. Now, some people might prefer the spread vowel. It's not good singing. Well, I don't mean to make you feel bad, but uh, in the words of um, Pavarotti, it's not elegant. Of course, we're not all singing opera, but it also is a little bit abusive on the voice. So what is pulled chest? It's just the bottom pulled up too high. The bottom voice, ah, there's no problem down there, right? And the ladies, ah, low C or the middle C, no big deal. Feels fine. Feels great. Wish everything was there, right? So, but singing is figuring out how to go from ah to ah, or the ladies, and uh, not be straining or pulling up the bottom. And that's really what we're all trying to figure out what, how to do, what to do. What do we have to do to get up there? So pulling chest voice is pulling it up too high. Pulling that bottom up and it just, oh. And the vowel will go, wah, spread. So the vowel kind of like, we don't say Maria, Maria, when we're talking, Maria. So it starts to spread and distort when we pull chest. And so that's part of, you know, figuring out, well, am I pulling chest? If I'm losing the vowel, the vowel's changing. Uh, let me take a couple uh, comments here. Um, so, so Darko, um, it's difficult to know if your forehead resonating is pulled up chest. Um, but it feels heavy, it feels tight, it feels, it feels like you're push, trying to push the ceiling of your voice higher and higher. <clears throat> it feels like it's going to break any minute. <clears throat> um, Okay, Joe says, I love all the exercises for, the, for what type of voice I have. So she's talking about your vocal type, and that's, again, going to uh, the description below this video. Uh, and I'll try and insert it into a card uh, when I do some edits on this, or just add it after the fact, and just put a little, uh, little notice up in the uh, top left uh, part of right around there, um, a link to the PDF, Get Your Vocal Type because that's what Joe's talking about. She's got her vocal type. She took a vocal test and she figured out whether she was pulled chest, high larynx, or whether she was a flip falsetto vocal type or light chest, no chest, or was mix. And this test will help you and it gives you exercises for those and videos about your vocal type. So you can watch videos about what you might tend to do. Mark Schultz says, hi, lots of great info. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Landa. I have a problem with my high note, C5, but um, I, I can go to G5, but it's, so, but it's really bad. Uh, Landa, um, can you tell me, I'm sorry, I don't know if Landa is what gender that primarily that name is. Are you guy? Um, because G5 is crazy high up there. And it's, uh, it's quite high for a female singer, too. Let me know. George's Twill PDF. Uh, George's, please, can you please send me the link to know the vocal 
the focal type. George, in the, after this video is over, in the description below, you might be able to get it now if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, in the description, get your vocal type. You just click on that and get the PDF. Um, Darko says, um, I understand. Yes, I understand is like the resonating for high notes. Don't even shift upper. Stay in the deep throat and surrounding like he's shouting or yelling. I guess. I'm, yes, I think that's a good, good way to put it. Deep in the throat. Um, now, see, when you're deep in the throat, though, uh, see, it starts to move up for me. Uh, now I feel like it's, it's, it's stuck in my mouth. You know, it's hitting the roof of my mouth. Oh, and, and that's all the further it goes. So if I do it hard enough, I guess, you know, your whole body can vibrate. But, um, and sounding like shouting or yelling. So I think that's a pretty close description of what it, what it is. Marty, uh, on Maria, you lowered your larynx. You know, Marty, all I did on that was just, yes, the answer is yes, the larynx came down, but I, I didn't lower the larynx. I just modified, I narrowed the vowel. What does that do? It, it allows the vibration, or the, the yeah, the vibration to like get up into my head now. So now I've got a blend of of head voice and chest. I've got two things going at the same time. It relieves such pressure. I'm jumping ahead here to talk about how to make you know, pulling chest better, but uh, in answer to your question, by narrowing the vowel from ah ah to uh. Ria. or not or, you know let's not letting it spread from uh to ah uh, and getting it back down to uh, uh i the, the vibration moves up to my head the larynx drops because before it was uh, now there's just there's you know it's not the tension in the larynx anymore uh, so that's a really great observation, Marty. Thanks for bringing that up. Nuno, hi. Nice to have you here. Horizon. Recently, I noticed that I have muscle tension dys dysphonia. It causes my larynx to move upward when I try and sing chesty mix. I got to go for manual uh, therapy, which is a new method to make those muscles free. Yeah, Horizon, that... Um, that's exactly what you need to do is you need to get in with a speech therapist and they have exercises and things that you can do to uh, treat the dysphonia. And good luck with that. Darko says, I'm tenor, maybe high tenor, uh, but I don't still build my good mix. So I have a little problem now, near F4 uh, to G4. And Darko, that's exactly where I would guess that if if there's a problems up above, uh, it usually starts. Uh, okay, so Landa, in fact, thank you, Landa, says she's a girl. Uh, so the question you had, Landa, was, um, oh, you you were. Let me go back to Landa for a second here. She said I have a problem, and you have a pink uh, image there, so I should have guessed. I have a problem. My high note C5, but I can go to G5. But it's so bad. Yeah, so Linda, I would, th I, I recommend that you co go back down to the A, B flat, B and C, C five, uh, those areas there, and 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 f try and determine if there's some tension there. That's the beginning of your bridge, and most of the time when we have troubles up higher, it's because we're not quite being honest there. What are we doing? We're pulling the chest up. All right, so I need to uh, I need to get on with the topic because everybody gets mad at me for not getting to it. Uh, so um, let me skip back down here to pick a couple more comments up, and then I'll go on to this number point number two. Um, so Darko again. 
the, the issue that I was talking with uh, Landon, Landa about is that her problem probably is E or A, B flat, B, and C. For you, the issue is the E, the F, the F sharp. That's the bridge area there. And it's probably so, some of the chest voices being pulled up there. So pulling the chest voice into too high into the bridge is going to cause you problems higher and higher. Uh, so in answer to, um, hopefully we've covered what it is. It's pulling that bottom up, yelling it, feeling that bottom um, being pushed higher and higher and higher. It's very throaty and then it gets to the top here in the mouth and just can't seem to release or to escape from that. It starts feeling a lot of tension uh, starts feeling um, almost abusive on the voice, and uh, and certainly if we sing that way for very long, we get hoarse, and then we can damage the voice. So when is it bad? When is pulling chest voice bad? I'm going to ask you guys. When is pulling chest voice bad? You tell me. What do you think? When is it pulling bad? Uh, just give me what your thoughts are. Just put a brief little, it's bad when your vocal cords start bleeding or something. You know, just tell me what you, you know, what you, when do you think it's bad? Um, Theodore says, how am I meant to sing high notes with low volume though? That's something I've struggled for a while. So Theodore, that is a hard thing. You, you, and you definitely can't do it by pulling the chest voice high. So when is chest voice, chest voice, uh, pulling chest voice bad? Pulling it up bad? It's when you want to have a different dynamic. When you don't want to be all out, yeah, you know, like you want to have a, a medium loud or maybe just medium or maybe even soft. So the answer, Theodore, to that is to bridge, to learn to bridge and mix, the mix between the chest voice and the head voice. Getting that down, getting that mix down allows you so much more control over the volume. So if I, if I said, um, if I'm pulling chest, ah, if, if I go, if I try and go quiet, it cracks, which is why we're pushing so hard. We don't want it to crack. Ladies, you're all up here. You know, if, if you're doing the same thing us guys do, only in your range, if, if you want to go soft and you're pulling chest and you back off of the volume, it cracks. So what you find out is that... Um, Chest, pulling chest voice doesn't give you a dynamic control of loud. It doesn't give you the loud and soft control when you're up pulling the chest voice. It just has to be loud. Otherwise, it cracks. That's part of pulling chest, isn't it? It's loud. If you're not loud, it's probably not pulling. Uh So, you know, you can't pull up the bottom if you're not getting a lot. So that's another part of the definition. It's loud or louder on the loud side. Okay, so um, Linda, full range. Okay, C sharp um, three. Oh, so you can get way down there and D7, but notes above C5 are squeezed. That's crazy. Uh, you know, the D7 is probably a falsetto, so you're just getting complete release up there. But uh, the C5 is where you're you're pulling the chest voice to C5, and that's where it's that's why it's squeezed. So you're just not getting into your head voice. You want to start bridging at the A. You want to start blending or mixing the 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 head voice. So uh, let me give you an example. If I said, ah, you know, if I keep if I keep pulling the bottom up at the A, it's going to be really, really hard at C5. 
So somewhere along the line, I've got to start mixing. So I just narrowed the vowel. There are other ways of doing it. And again, if you've, uh, it sounds like you might be the pulled chest high larynx vocal type. There are exercises for you to help you learn to do that. And you get them in that PDF I talked about down below. Uh, thanks for your great comments, you guys. Man, does that make sense? It's, you've got to start bridging sooner. Otherwise, C5 is always going to feel squeezed. Uh, Jenna Stone, hi. My throat suddenly started shutting down when I go high. I sang a lot one morning with no warm-up water, strained to reach my high notes. Can I fix this? Uh, is it Jen, Gina? Gianna or Jenna? Gina? Um, <clears throat> how long ago was that? Did it happen like kind of suddenly? You just felt it right then? Or did it happen, you know, just like the next day you felt a little? Give me a little bit more ex of that. You might need to go see a doctor. There, the, the, you may have, uh, sometimes if people do that and you feel something kind of happen and now you can't vocalize um, very, very well without like maybe trying to get around a bruise or something, um, there may be something there. You might want to check it out. The only thing, I, one of the things I can think of is maybe you get a little bruise, a little blood vessel that's, that's bleeding there, and that's called a hemorrhage. Um, the other thing you might want to take a look at, I don't think if it just happened in one morning, it would be a, um, a um, but if you were singing all morning, maybe you sang, you sang a lot in one morning, yeah. I suppose you could have uh, caused some, um, some other little thing, maybe a nodule or something on there. Go see an ENT. If it doesn't resolve in the next couple of days, go see an ENT. Truly, you don't want to mess around with that. You really do not. Marty says, great info, tons of help. How can anyone <laughs> get mad at you? <laughs> That's what I want to know, Marty. <laughs> uh, no, what the, they say on these broadcasts, these long broadcasts, he doesn't, it takes him forever to get to the point. This is because I'm talking with you guys. Um, so, uh, you know, they get on, they, they see the title, they want information, boom, 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 and they don't want to have to search through it. And I understand that. This is probably not the format for that a consumer of information. They would want to go to my Friday uh, where I, you know, I edit it. It's ten, five to ten minutes kind of thing. But thanks, Marty. <laughs> um, okay. So when is it good? Well, good question, Joe. I can't think of a. I think can't think of a good answer. I suppose, you know, if um, if you didn't know what you're doing, and you didn't know any other way, and you had to sing a high note, as long as it wasn't too high, you have to do something. But uh, is that good? I think that's just a stopgap measure until you can, you know, figure out how to do it, how to do it well, how to sing well. And so let's, we'll get to that um, in a second, but um, that's a great question, Joe. I, you know, there's not very many instances. It's, I think it's only if you can do it no other way and, and you don't do it excessively, then, you know, what else can you do? Um, in the immediate moment. But my plea to you is, and my, and my desire to let you know this, everyone, is that it's not the top of your voice and you don't have to pull it up. There's a way to start mixing it so that you get a strong voice, but it's, it's a blend of chest and head voice. And then it starts to really increase your range. So if I said, ah, started pulling I can't go any higher without cracking or just getting too ab abusive in my voice but if I can learn to get through that bridge <laughs> that's the high E
So there's three octaves. So anyway, I increased my range an octave when I learned how to do this. I don't ever sing with a high E. I don't have any songs that sing that high. But, uh, but now the G isn't too high <laughs> for me. Or even the A flat, you know. So <clears throat> it does amazing things to learn to do this bridging. Uh, so, sorry, Marty Bear, I was answering. Okay, yeah, anyway. So, um, so Darko asks, uh, says, but I need to learn how to sing that high notes near E4, F4, G4, A4 area because every pop male song tenor sing, uh, sings mixed voice, some exercises. Some exercises for not pulling chest. Yes, Darko. There are. There's exercises for the pull chest high larynx uh, voice, which are designed to get you to stop doing that. The exercises for the pull chest high larynx vocal type are to counteract that. It's to stop you from doing that. It's to enable you to sing those notes without pulling chest. PDF in the description below. Get your vocal type. It'll take you to descriptions of your vocal type and the exercises for you. Watch them all. Take the test. Watch the videos and then start working on the exercises. They are designed to do precisely what you're describing. So in other words, instead of saying, no, 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 the F for no, 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 Ma 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 ma. That's the A for ma 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 ma. That's what it will do for you. I couldn't do that in a million years until I learned this. What I'm teaching you. Okay, Mark Schultz. There is no break. There is no spoon. Uh, neither, but neither uh, goes. But either goes smoothly into falsetto. Or light chest. It's not loud, but I feel it come out of my mouth. I can sing falsetto starting at A2. Um, so, so, Mark, there is a transition that you're experiencing um, that takes you into another condition. The problem, it sounds like you're saying, is that... Um, I guess my question is, is that what you have to do or are you choosing to do that? In other words, if you're saying, ah, that's okay. Is that what you want to do? Do you have to do it that way or do you want to do it more firmly? Ah, so, we 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 got to be able to, we want to do both right we want to be able to do it both ways. Carlos, check his pull chest high larynx exercise demo. Right on, Carlos. Um, so Jenna says the next day. And has it been that way, Jenna? How long has it been going? Has this been going on for? I, I don't remember you saying if it was yesterday or at this last week. If this is con persisting for several days and is not resolving. Please go see the doctor, okay? All right, you said okay. Yes, around an hour. I've done the test. No nodules, as far as I can tell. Um, I gave, as I, I have done. So, Jenna, did you go see the doctor? Don't. Um, just be careful. I wouldn't repeat whatever you did. I wouldn't repeat it, okay? <laughs> Don't do it again. You got to take care of that wonderful instrument of yours. Okay, so Carlos says falsetto starting at A2. You sure you don't mean A3? Um, yeah, I can't start falsetto at A3 myself. I, I'm sorry, I missed that. I didn't see that. Um, I can see falsetto starting at A2. Yeah, so... Oh, okay, I can barely get it all. That's the A3. Oh, oh, oh. I have to go in the chest there. Uh, so probably A3. 
Unless you're like a contrabass. Um, but I don't think so. Oh, oh, oh. I, I have my doubts. <laughs> I think it's pretty impossible to do that down there. Good catch. Who caught that? Uh, yeah, probably A3. Thanks, Carlos. Keep us honest here. Okay. Um, thanks for helping us figure it out. Wouldn't have done it without your info. Thanks, Joe. Pauline Ortega. Uh, so, hi, Pauline. How does combining mixed voice and chest voice um, can you give an example? So let me give you um, chest. <laughs> Half step. <laughs> Pretty much all chest. Now, um, we don't really combine mix with chest. We combined head voice with chest, and that's the mix. A blend of... To, you have to have a couple things to get it mixed, right? Like water and flour, it's mixed together. So the two things we mix together are not mix and chest. We mix chest and head. Ah, head voice, ah, or chest voice. Ah. Now if I narrow the vowel slightly, ah, now I'm getting some vertical res vibration going. Ah, it's in my mouth ah, and down in my chest. Ah. Now, as soon as I go from ah to ah, ah, now I'm starting to get a vertical, uh, some upper vibration going. Ah. Now, for me and the guys, uh, the G, uh, that's going to be pretty much just head voice going on up. So, so Pauline, for you... Um, that would start, your mix would start around the A above middle C. So, so ah to uh, just try it. And keep it on uh, and just see if you can start to feel that. Um, Theodore says, my vocal coach works on my voice through songs I choose, and it's only once a week. She plays the songs in the lower key on the piano, but sometimes I got to push uh, to hit the note or two. Uh, so Theodore, my, I had a same similar teacher when I was in high school. We sang everything from an E down. We never uh, ever tried to sing anything higher. I think I sang one song, Trumpeter, and there was an F in it for a moment or something, but um, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> you know, terror. So I would try and find a way to start working on your bridge so you can get the, um, you know, get up into your, once you start learning how to bridge, then you actually start re raising the pitch because it gets easier. Okay, so um, I don't know if I ever get caught up on all these uh, things here. I want to get to... Um, We've talked about what it is. I think you know what it sounds like. And uh, is it okay to do? I, I think generally speaking, if, it's that, if you don't know any other way, what can you do? Um, it, what, I wasn't okay with it myself. And so I wouldn't go very high. And um, for a really good, really gifted singer, they can pull chest really well. And a lot of times it doesn't sound too bad, but almost always there's no way to escape the morning after when you're hoarse. And if you have a gig the next night and do it again, then the morning after that is even worse and the gig's not as good. That's why I'm going to say definitively pulling chest voice up is not good. When is it okay? I would say it's just not okay. But there's a there's an alternative, and that's what we're talking about today. There are alternatives to this, and so we want to do that as number three: how to make it better. Well, I don't think you can make pulled chest better. 
but you can learn to mix chest with head voice and get a great sound, have it feel a lot better, and in fact, over a period of time, it sounds like you're in chest, but it doesn't sound like you're in pulled up chest. In other words, you don't hear the laboring. You don't hear the slowing down of the vibrato. That's another sign of pulling up the chest. The vibrato starts to slow and it gets labored. Whoa! Um, and uh, so we want to figure out a way. There, there is a way, and I'm, I'm sharing this with you today. There is a way that you don't have to do pulled up chest. You have to if you don't know any other thing. But um, in my case, I stopped. I wouldn't sing any higher. Just like Theodore's, I just sang everything below E, um, above middle C. And that was my life. Boring. Like somebody said, is it Theodore? Someone said, all the pop songs are up on the, I think it was uh, D Darko said, it's always at the E, F, F sharp, G. I mean, A flat. Those were all the fun pop songs are, you know. So we want to be able to, you want to be able to sing those. You want to be able to have the, that range. And this is what, this is what it can do for you. So um, how to make it better? Uh, Santrex, I'm pulling voice every day. I understand. You don't have to do it. And these are, these are some options for you, okay? Uh, Sandra Ricks. Mark Schultz, more firmly. I thought it was good to strengthen falsetto as low as possible. Uh, Mark, I, I'm not aware of anything, any benefit from that, um, except really. It feels like a mix to, to, to me. My voice is like yours. Okay. Yeah, so it is a two. Well, um, Maybe we're, we're probably defining, Mark, falsetto differently. I'm defining falsetto as disconnected tone. Oh, oh, okay, now I'm disconnected. The only way I'm going to get back in is to clunk back in. Oh, 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 oh. Now I'm back in. That's falsetto. Now, if I'm just in a, um, I can, uh, you, you know, you could probably say that you can mix down into there. If I'd maintain this vertical vibration, so I'm just maintaining a vertical resonance, which some people, and it's probably accurate, would say I'm mixing down there but I can't do falsetto that low. Falsetto is, um, I think it's pretty impossible to get down because you have to disconnect the, uh, the thyroid arytenoid to go that low, and I don't think you can. Um, so, Pauline says, yes, thank you. Okay, awesome, Pauline. So get the, go to, uh, get the PDF, get your vocal type. There are exercises that help you do that, that help you start to, to bridge through that area there uh, and not just narrowing the vowel. It's, so I, I would recommend that to you for sure. Jenna says, um, or Gina, Gina uh, says, hey, thanks. Again, thanks. Your videos have helped. Good. Can I link a song? Uh, you know, Santa Rick's, uh, that's, f feel free to, I, you know, um, I can't play it here because they'll shut my uh, channel off. <laughs> um, Mark Schultz, one more question. It sounds you pull, it sounds you pull up chest, but modify it to get the head resonance. My female chorus teacher seems like she taught me like, uh, like a soprano. So how do you modify to get a vertical sound? Well, um, so Mark, there are different vowels that we, we use. Just if the vowel is wide, ah, uh, horizontally, we just try and narrow it slightly. So ah to uh, uh to uh, so ah to, so sorry, ah, uh, ah to uh, uh to uh, uh to oo, or o, and then just oo. 
or a to um a to e a e e a e to e e to e and then to e and that's the kind of the the different ways of modifying the vowel that helps bring in the upper that upper resonance that um so if i said if i said um na 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 at a chest a little bit of a in that na 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 that's kind of um that's probably not a great illustration, but um, listen to, uh, I had to take this down. Uh, I, w I got a copyright strike against me because I gave an example of Michael Jackson singing bad and the chorus, he doesn't sing bad. And I had an example of him singing that. And of course they said, uh, you know, they were throwing me in jail. And now what they were gonna, what they said they'd do is they would not allow my video to be shown in 263 countries on earth because I was showing Michael Jackson illustrating an example of something I was trying to teach. Sorry, I'm ranting. Okay. Um, so again, Mark, I would go, I would do the, uh, look for the exercises in this, uh, get your vocal type because um, the pole chest exercises start giving you not just vowels, but things that exercises you can do to start learning to bridge. Bridge meaning getting through E, F, F sharp, G um, and into head voice by blending or mixing together chest and head voice, okay? Landa says, uh, how can I sing and mix if I don't have break between registers? Well, if you have a mix, you don't have a break in, in your register. So, um, it's hard to say exa exactly. Um, if I said, um, oh, I didn't break, but I'm not really, I'm not really servicing. I'm not really singing, you know, full out. So uh, I can, I can get through different bridges and still not really be able to use that voice in a song. So I don't know, Linda, if, if you're, um, are you saying that, I'm not exactly sure what you're asking. How can I sing in mix if I don't have a break between registers? Well, in your low voice, Linda, it's chest. <laughs> and up here, it's head. up here. So what we want to do is we take those and you know we have the chest and we have the, uh, the the head voice and that area here where they're both participating is your mix. Now you may not have a break but you can still mix. You can still uh, and you won't have a break if you're mixing. So maybe you're already mixing. That would be nice except they can't remember it seemed like there was some other issues you were having. So you might find, you guys, and this is possible, that when you take the vocal test, you actually are, uh, comes out mix. You know, I've, I've had, I think uh, in the last um, five years since I've been with this test, well, probably since 2015, I've had, I think, two or three, maybe, I don't know, maybe five or six, like a half a dozen, who were definitely mix. Most of the time, um, somebody, even if they're mixing, their larynx is up a little bit. So they may not be pulling chest, but the larynx is high. So it would be pulled chest, high larynx. Okay. Um, Theodore's, uh, all right. So let me just, <laughs> let me just get to, let me stop here and say, um, This message is held for review. I mean, how do I expand my chest voice before I try to bridge? Because without pushing, I can reach E4. When I get to F4, it sounds shouty. So Theodore, uh, just stop pushing it at the E flat four, okay? 
because the E is where the bridge begins. So you don't have to expand your chest. The chest is, is the chest voice technically ends at the E4. And in fact, you could even begin mixing before that. There's nothing wrong with mixing early. There is a lot wrong with pulling chest up. Um, okay, so how do we make it better? We do exercises to learn to bridge. So, and I, you know, you've seen this before, many of you, some of you haven't. So I just vocalize from A to A, A3 to A4, there's no break and the larynx stay down. So that's the beginning. Another exercise, a little bit of a witchy sound, not too loud, on nay, 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 will connect the tone through the bridge without pulling up the chest. It thins that chest out, but it's not falsetto. It's deeper than falsetto. Or, Gee, and we let it go just a little bit hooty, a little hollow sounding. Another exercise to learn to get through the bridge connected so that the tone doesn't crack into falsetto or we don't pull up the chest. So there are specific exercises you guys are available in the exercises for pull chest high larynx for the flip falsetto vocal type for light chest no chest if you tend to do it breathy. Okay. Um, all right, so Marty asks or says eagle songs absolutely need to be at the G4 to A4. Yeah, so uh, that's a good point. And that's why it's so motivating to learn this, learn what I'm teaching you here because the whole world opens up to you, things you've never considered before. Jose, hi, nice to have you here. What does C5 or a4 mean? How knowing these terms help in, with singing? Okay, uh, so Jose, here's the piano. Here's the piano keyboard right here. Okay, so if I'm down here, this is the low C. C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. C6, C7, C8. C8. It's just a way of knowing where you're at on the, on in pitches. So C4 is pretty much like right in the middle of those, middle C. So it just helps you kind of. Uh, it, so when we say uh, E4, that's C, D, E4. And um, that's where your bridge begins, Jose. Okay, Mark says, gotcha. It's, it, it is connected. Sound, it just sounds heady at the bridge. And, I will, and it will go completely into chest at G2. Yeah. So um, I think you're, you're just maintaining some of that upper vibration all the way down into the low area. And, uh, and that's good. I think that's, that's awesome that you, you're aware of that and can sense that. Um, Mark says, uh, I hear it. Thank you so much. I will try. Okay, so last question uh, from Theodore. I can use both high larynx. Can I use both high larynx, pull chest, and flip falsetto, falsetto exercises? Theodore, most of the time, when someone, much of the time, I'd say 90% of the time, 80%, 70%, when someone's flipping in the falsetto, it's because the larynx is coming up and some chest voice is being pulled up and they flip. So if you do exercises for pulled chest high larynx, you may find that it eliminates the flip into falsetto. So sometimes people will take the vocal test and get a score and they'll say, oh, 
I'm flip falsetto because they flipped. But when I hear it, if they send it to me too, I hear it and I say, well, you're pulled chest high larynx. And they write back and say, wait a minute. The test said this, but you said this. That's the reason why. You can't hear the larynx being pulled up and maybe you're not aware of chest voice being pulled and the computer can't tell you that. It's hard to, you know, it's self, the self-diagnosis is, can, can be challenging sometimes. But the answer is, yeah, you can do them both and it's not going to hurt. But you may find that just doing pulled chest high larynx takes care of the flip. All right. Well, awesome questions. You guys are amazing. Um, I, th I hope that the answer to number three, and that is how to make it better, that you, you, you understand that if you don't know anything else what to do, you have to do it. But to make it better, get, get these exercises going in your voice because you can do it. I didn't know you could do it. I didn't know I could do it until I found out that it's possible. I'm not, I wasn't at the top of my voice. There was just this bridge area that I had to learn how to get through. And that wasn't easy. It's not, it's not an overnight thing. But wow, is it life-changing. All right. So, um, Theodore says, I'm, I am fl mostly flipping on lower notes when I'm not pushing. So, Theodore, you might, it just might be that you're, I don't know what you're, how, how low can you sing? Can you sing down here? Uh, thanks, Joe. You're, a, no, you're amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. No, you're amazing. Okay. Uh, I'm Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing. You can sing higher with beauty, confidence, and power. There's a reason why I say it. I just want you to know you can. It's possible you can. You can do it well with beauty. You can do it, and the more you do it with confidence, and the more you do it, you'll get power in it. So um, thanks for joining me today. And I'll see you inside our, our next uh, video, our next broadcast. Thanks.